Welcome everyone to Youth Build USA's 15th annual and first ever virtual Building Better Together event. Uh, I'm John Valverde, CEO at Youth Build USA, and I bring you greetings from the nearly 300 Youth Build programs around the world. And I think it's so important to ground us in our mission uh, uh, at Youth Build as a movement. And our mission is that with love and respect, we partner with Opportunity Youth to build the skill sets and mindsets that lead to lifelong learning, livelihood, and leadership. And we envision a world where all young people are seen for their potential and power to transform themselves and their communities. I just wanted to name that and connect us to these 300 programs and the thousands of young people especially in a year like this, we are inspired by their courage and resiliency. And uh, we're so grateful to be able to support and stand with them. So thank you all for being here with us. For years, we've hosted this event in collaboration with private partners, local youth build programs, and the Massachusetts Youth Build Coalition. While tonight is different, uh, no hugs, no handshakes, uh, cocktails or snacks, uh, there are silver linings. And while we're so sorry that we cannot be together in person, we are glad that we're able to welcome folks from all over the world who have logged in today. So what was a local event today is a global event. And we want to thank partners and sponsors, program staff, alumni, families, and friends for joining us today. Uh, 2020 has been a strange challenging, difficult year. It's also been a very full year for us at Youth Build USA. Uh, we led a global rebrand of the Youth Build Network, which is being showcased here today. And we moved our headquarters to a new home base in Roxbury in Boston, closer to communities we serve. We look forward to the day when we can welcome all of you in our beautiful new space and that we can be together again. Uh, we also celebrated this year, 10 years of partnership with San Goban, uh, both domestically and internationally. We expanded our work with Prudential Financial and PGIM around the world. We're so excited to be growing our partnership with JP Morgan Chase. We launched a national partnership with Penn Foster and so many other partnerships, uh, including with this old house, so more to come. And as you will see in here tonight, none of us can do this alone. Uh, partnership is critical to our success and especially in this challenging year, working together and supporting each other throughout our network and beyond is essential. Before we go any further, let me be sure to say we are recording this event and we'll try to share all or part of it uh, after, afterwards. Uh, we can take your questions in the chat or in the Q&A, uh, you'll see it there on the bottom of the screen. We will have chat moderators and we'll try to have our participants respond in real time if possible, but we may save some specific responses for later on in the event. And finally, we hope you'll be patient with us while technology brings us together and it's amazing that we can still have a virtual event. We do assume that some elements of tonight's event will be slow, maybe not perfectly smooth, but in good youth build fashion, we will do our best to adjust as quickly as possible. So bear with us. And before we begin the live elements of, uh, of this evening, we'd like to share a message from one of our congressional champions, Massachusetts Congressman Seth Moulton. You know, these are dark times for our country. So many people dying from this vicious pandemic and there's somber times in Washington because partisan gridlock is preventing us from doing the work that we need to do to support all of you. There's a lot of hopelessness in America right now as a result, but when I look for hope, I look to groups like yours because you are doing inspiring work every single day to serve our fellow Americans, to serve our country. I have such fond memories of building that wheelchair ramp nearby because it makes a difference in people's lives, even in just a life of one veteran. 
That's the work that you do every single day. So thank you for being an inspiration to us in dark times for our country. Keep up the great work and thank you. Thank you, Congressman, for standing with us and our young people. Uh, Congre Congressman Moulton from Massachusetts North Shore has been a longtime supporter of Youth Build USA. We're grateful for his time volunteering alongside our Youth Build North Shore program and alongside young leaders in Salem, building, as he mentioned, uh, wheelchair ramps and painting housing facilities for veterans. We are so grateful for our bipartisan support throughout Congress. We were deeply saddened this year by the loss of uh, Congressman John Lewis, a longtime champion of Youth Build. We're excited to announce today that we have a new Democratic House champion, Karen Bass, a Congresswoman representing the 37th District in Los Angeles, California. We are eager to begin working with Congressman Bass Congresswoman Bass and the new administration. Congresswoman Bass will work alongside our Republican House champion, Scott Perry from Pennsylvania. And in the Senate, we work closely with our Senate champions, John Cornyn of Texas and Kirsten Gillibrand of, of New York. We are very fortunate and so proud to have support from both sides of the aisle and from all corners of the nation. Now, We've got an exciting hour ahead of us. First, I'd like to introduce two amazing Youth Bill graduates. Wendy and Whitney Bean are sisters, both of whom attended Tomorrow's Builders Youth Build in East St. Louis, Illinois, and graduated in 2004. We'd like to have them share some of their experience with Youth Build and how all of their experience in education, training, and leadership development has shaped who they are today. Hello. My name is Wendy Bing. I am a 2004 alumni from the Youth Bill in a small town called East St. Louis. I am now a business owner of a logistics business called r and Logistics and Escorts that will be opening soon that will specialize in oversized loads. I attended two youth bills, one in Alton and one in East St. Louis. I didn't graduate from the one in Alton because I was not old enough. I would like to thank my Aunt Sharon, who was over the one in, in Alton. She always pushed me to be great, to do great things in life. Also, I would like to thank Mr. Willis. He was over the one in East St. Louis. He always gave us encouraging words and brought in motivational speakers that came from lower poverty areas as myself. Youth Bill has given me a construction trade that no other high school will have given in an OSHA training. Youth Bill has continued to help and push me by giving me a Assess Trust Award. This has helped me with purchasing the first 18 wheeler for my business. If I could say anything to the youth today, it would be to stay focused on your goals no matter how hard life gets. Just keep pushing yourself. Thank you so much, Youth Bill. How you guys doing today? My name is Whitney Bean. Um, first and foremost, I would love to thank Youth Bill for actually uh, inviting me to speak at this event. Um, like I said, my name is Whitney Bean. Uh, you just heard from my twin sister, Wendy. Uh, we both graduated from the Youth Bill in 2004 from the East St. Louis. Um, along with our older brother, Jason, and then um, our younger sister, Kendra, followed us, followed suit in 2005. Uh, to be very honest with everyone, I did not want to attend Youth Bill at first. Um, I had dreams of going to a regular high school, playing basketball, running track. Um, however, the mother that we had, she always believed in unity. So for what one child did, all of them had to follow suit pretty much. Um, so thankful that she was that type of mother because I was able to get a trade in construction at Youthville, meet a lot of great, wonderful people. Um, some of my classmates who I've kept in contact with over the years. Um, I myself now, I work for a major wireless carrier. However, I've also started my own business. It's called Web Realty. And pretty much what I specialize in is buying derelict homes, 
fixing them up and then renting them out to lower income families. Um, I chose to do that because when I was a child, I remember one of the uh, um, houses that we lived in, the uh, manager of the house, he told my mom um, that he wanted to take a chance. He would take a chance with her being a single mother with four children and give her a chance to, um, you know, rent to her. So I took that and was just like, okay, you know what? Everybody deserves some sort of a chance. Um, and I want to want other children to have the same type of background and, and, and household that I came up in. And that foundation starts at home, having a good foundation. So that's one of the reasons why I was able to um, open up my business and wanted to open up my business, as well as um, being able to do some of the construction work myself because of youth bill. Um, had it not been for them having that trade in construction, specializing in carpentry, I wouldn't be able to do any of that. Um, also want to definitely thank um, a, one teacher that stood out to me who kept me on a straight and narrow. His name was Keaton Higgins. Uh, he was a math teacher and he saw that the what course load that I had wasn't challenging enough. So he took it upon himself in his own free time to make sure that I had a, a workload that was challenging for me. So I really, really greatly appreciate that. Again, thank you, Youth Bill. Thank you all for uh, taking the chance on a kid who didn't want to go there, but uh, ended up turn out, turning out to be a pretty good adult. Um, and I just want to share my last thought for the youth of tomorrow. You know, um, always challenge yourself, no matter what anybody says, believe in yourself, um, stay inspired, surround yourself by positive people, and your tomorrow will become your today. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you so much, Wendy and, and Whitney, for, for sharing with us. Uh, it's just incredibly inspiring to hear about your your journeys and your amazing accomplishments. And again, just incredibly inspiring to hear your stories even years after completing your Youth Build experience. Uh, we always say once in Youth Build, always in Youth Build. Uh, it's so great to see you thriving and uh, we wish you all the best on your business ventures and anything that is next for you is going to be amazing. We're sure of that. Now it's time to thank our sponsors. And as we've said, we cannot do this alone. Tonight, we are especially grateful to our event sponsors, many of which have sponsored this event for years. So thank you to all our sponsors and financial supporters, old and new. And uh, we wanna give a special thanks today to tonight's lead sponsors. Uh, as you see on the screen, home site, Abrams Management Company and Wynn Companies. Each of these sponsors has partnered with Youth Build USA and local Youth Build programs and students in unique ways. Each of these companies has a strong commitment to our young people, to affordable housing and to community building. We are so proud to work alongside you. And a special thanks to our champions at these organizations of Shirley Knowles, Martha Abrams Bell, and Trevor Samuels. We are especially grateful for our partnership with each of you. We also wanna thank our event sponsors and event hosts. Uh, tonight's sponsors include Boston Private, Keith Construction, Benjamin Moore, and Liberty Mutual Insurance. We'd like to share a special acknowledgement for Benjamin Moore, uh, a first time sponsor of this event. They have also supported youth build programs throughout the country with countless gallons of paint to support uh, many of the projects. And this year they even shifted gears and donated liters upon liters of hand sanitizer to help programs around the country keep our students and staff safe. And finally, we wanna thank tonight's hosts, Wingate Companies, Cranshaw Construction, and Stantec. Here you see all our sponsors, and I know if we were all together, there'd be a huge round of applause right now for, for each of you. And as our event is aptly named, uh, this is what's possible when we build better together. So thank you again to all our sponsors and hosts. 
Now we'd like to uh, introduce our inaugural Youth Build USA Core Values Award. Uh, again, in recognition of the fact that we know we cannot accomplish this work alone, we would like to honor some of our partners this evening. As part of our global rebrand this year, we outlined new improved core values. You see them there on the screen, love, accountability, collaboration, diversity, and leadership. We think many of our partners exhibit these qualities and chose to establish an award this year to commend those who have worked with us, our programs, and our young people. We are pleased to share tonight uh, our inaugural Core Values Award for an organizational partner and to an individual partner. First, our organizational partner, Goulston and Stores. And you see the image of Andy Fern there, who we'll be hearing from in, in just a minute. Uh, we want to recognize Goulston and Stores uh, for our partnership over so many years as our pro bono legal counsel. And we're grateful to Pam McKenzie, our board member, who's also a partner at Goulston and Stores. Uh, as many of you know, Goulston is a real estate powerhouse with leading corporate tax litigation and private client and trust practices. And our partnership goes back over 25 years. Uh, there's too many uh, thank yous and elements of our partnership that uh, we feel so grateful for. But I just wanted to highlight a few because I can't read the, the 50 <laughs> individual uh, supports that they've given us, but it's ranged from contract matters, including affiliate agreements with our field of programs, grant agreements, agreements and for collaborations and joint ventures uh, that, that we've embarked on over the years. They've helped us with our brand management and enforcement, including rebranding initiative and registration of youth build trademarks around the world. Uh, they supported our international expansion including advice regarding the launch and operation of Youth Build International and various foreign affiliates. And over these 25 plus years, 197 Goulston lawyers and paralegals have worked with Youth Build since 1993, totaling to over 12,000 hours of time valued at over $5.4 million. And this 25 plus year history is uh, something we are grateful for every single day. On behalf of Youth Build USA, I'm proud to present this award to Goulston Stores, accepted by Andy Fern, who leads many of the pro bono initiatives there. And Andy's an intellectual property lawyer and business counselor, and clients rely on him for legal and practical business guidance in matters involving intellectual property, commercial transactions, general corporate issues, and nonprofit operations and compliance. So you see why we work closely with Andy too. And Andy devotes much of his time to his pro bono work and representing nonprofits, including us. Uh, I'd love to turn it over to Andy to say a few words. Well, thanks very much, John. I'm grateful for those words. You really stole most of my thunder, I think. Um, but let me first start by saying uh, that I want to congratulate my uh, friend and colleague David Abramowitz on his individual recognition this evening. You'll be speaking about him momentarily. And I wanted to mention him because he's a longtime pro bono leader and role model at our law firm. And I have to thank him for involving me in Youth Build about 17 years ago. That was really critical uh, to, to my involvement. So uh, thanks to David. I am truly proud to accept the Core Values Partner Award on behalf of Goulson and Stores. Uh, right up front, I wanna make it crystal clear that Youth Build is not my client personally. It's a client of the law firm. This is a team award. I'm accepting it on behalf of the team. Um, and when I, I thought about the, uh, the various core values that have been launched now, uh, the one that really stood out to me in our relationship with Youth Build is collaboration. That collaboration uh, core value says we work together to achieve common goals and we contribute to a supportive community. And I see that happening on two levels in the relationship with Youth Build. First, there's the, the collaboration between Goulston and Youth Build. And then in addition, there's collaboration within Goulston in order to serve Youth Build. Um, John, you've already highlighted 
and various examples of the kinds of work we've done over the last almost 30 years, uh, I think what that shows is that our pro bono model is really a broad-based one and that um, it covers multiple practice areas. Many, many people on both sides of the respective organizations have been involved over the years. And it really, um, th that the youth build relationship exemplifies our broad-based collaborative model. Um, I also wanted to, to mention the collaboration that goes on within Goulston because no one or small group of lawyers can manage uh, the, the, the needs of an organization like youth build, youth build. You've already uh, called out some of the statistics, 197 different lawyers and paralegals involved over the years. I was shocked when I discovered that. But then again, I, I'm not that surprised because it really reflects how uh, deeply uh, spread the, the work is throughout the organization. And I think based on all that, it's safe to say that Goulston is fully invested in youth build. Um, I'm confident that the mission, the collaboration will continue in years to come. And just want to say thanks again on behalf of Goulston for recognizing our partnership with youth build. Thanks a lot. Fantastic. Thank you, Andy. Uh, thank you to you and Pam and all your team and colleagues at, at Goulston uh, for your leadership and collaboration uh, in our work, really exemplifying our, our core values. We cannot thank you enough. And it's fitting too that our individual core values awardee is longtime youth builder, David Abramowitz. David is a nationally known real estate and affordable housing attorney um, and an advocate for opportunity youth. He has a decades long relationship with the youth build movement as both pro bono counsel and board member of Youth Build USA and even uh, worked most recently on staff at Youth Build USA as our chief public policy officer. And just some of his accomplishments at Youth Build USA uh, during his time here. Uh, in his five years with us, he increased uh, in partnership with his team and, and the field of Youth Build programs, increased the Federal Department of Labor Youth Build appropriation by nearly 25%. He expanded our bipartisan support in Congress. He supported multiple state level Youth Build coalition coalitions in their advocacy efforts. And he was integral uh, in our planning efforts around our recent move to Roxbury. He sits on a number of boards and committees and is dedicated to his community. We are grateful for his commitment to youth build and to opportunity youth everywhere. It'd be great to hear a few words from David. Thank you, John. That's really uh, special, and uh, it's wonderful to follow Andy. And Andy, uh, I'm deeply moved by your, your comments and all. Um, it's, I was going to say it's really terrific to see so many faces, I guess so many familiar avatars uh, in the world of Zoom uh, tonight. Uh, I do look forward next year to getting together in person and, uh, and really being able to mingle when we put, put this horrible year behind us in a lot of ways. Um, you know, this evening brought to mind uh, that it was almost uh, over 25 years, almost 30 years ago now, that I got a call from a former Goulston Stores client. And Melvin told me on the call that he had recently joined something called Youth Build USA. And he explained that uh, Youth Build USA had just gotten a large grant from the Ford Foundation to start a loan fund to try to replicate Youth Build programs around the country. Uh, beyond uh, New York and the, and the one that had uh, started up in Boston. And uh, he asked, um, would we be able to do some pro bono work to help them create the loan fund, which actually was the origin uh, of the relationship that Andy spoke to. And I said, sure, Melvin, uh, we're good lawyers. We can figure that out, but what's a youth bill? So to answer the question, Melvin came down to the office with uh, a woman named Dorothy Stoneman uh, a few of us sat down and, and met her, and she told us about the, the founding of the Youth Build Program in East Harlem and the engagement with young people uh, around the community who had uh, been not treated well by school or work or the, frankly, the systems that were broken all around them. And um, that the model was built on love in its approach to uh, young men and women who many people had given up on. And it was 
really hearing that core value of love, which is one of the, the five four, uh, core values that John spoke to earlier, that, that drew me into Youth Build first, that, uh, that it was standing on a bedrock of values that were important to me and that I wasn't hearing in, in other social service and other programs dealing with young people and people in poverty. Uh, it was dedication to the core values of accountability and seeing the leadership potential in every young person that uh, sustained my involvement over the years. And when I uh, heard earlier from uh, Wendy and Whitney of their experience, and I was reminded about the amazing uh, alumni that uh, are part of the Youth Build family. Um, you know, I've really been privileged to be part of the Youth Build movement in different ways over the years. Um, and of the many, many rewards from that involvement has been getting to know literally thousands of talented young people, men and women who we now commonly call Opportunity Youth. Uh, they have inspired all of us on this event, not just me, with their strength, their resilience, their commitment to their family, to community, and to making the world better. Uh, they've also inspired me to launch a new project that will support former Opportunity Youth who want to run for local elective office. And they are the people who know the, the broken systems that uh, people have been marching about. They know them best and they know how to fix them. So I can truly say that I owe an enormous amount to the Youth Build movement and, and it's really enriched my life. Uh, it's a true honor and a pleasure to celebrate with you tonight Youth Build's uh, renewed dedication and commitment to its core values and I wanna thank you, thank John, and very happy to see people carrying on the good work. Thank you so much, David, and, and uh, no surprise that your leadership and support of, of Opportunity Youth and youth leadership uh, is continuing. Uh, we're indebted to you and so appreciate you accepting this award. And we think it's so fitting uh, that you're receiving it also uh, with Goulston. Uh, uh, as well. Uh, there really is no one more deserving. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Dave. And now I'd like to introduce Michelle Corton Brown and move into uh, our this evening's panel. Uh, Michelle is one of the most generous leaders I know. Uh, she leads business development for Blue Cross Blue Shield Massachusetts and sits on several philanthropic boards. Uh, she has served on the board of Youth Build USA for nearly 15 years. And we are so fortunate to have her as a champion in our corner and as a champion for young people everywhere. Thanks, John. Um, and I just wanna thank you uh, for your leadership and the way in which you lead with both vision and with love. So it's been a privilege to be on the board with you um, or being on the board and serving with you and really following through on the amazing work of our young people in this country. Um, I was pleased to be asked to, to uh, moderate the panel, which will start just momentarily. Um, I have to say that these kinds of experiences actually feed my soul because um, whether it was Wendy and Whitney um, or others that we get an opportunity to connect with, we understand the value of this program and the value of young people's voices. And today we are treated uh, by three alumni who we'll hear from today, uh, Jasmine Anderson, Jude Steffers, Steffers Wilson, um, and um, Steve Figueroa, uh, who I'm gonna now just change my screen slightly so I can see everyone. Um, we're gonna just have a chat about what we've learned um, from our experience in Youth Build and what the alumni journey has been like. So welcome, Jasmine, Jude, and Steve. Uh, and I'm going to ask you guys to take yourselves off of um, mute, which will allow us to have a quick conversation. Um, so why don't I start 
with just a, a first question, just for all, all of us to get to know one another a little better. So um, can you each just introduce yourselves, talk about where you're from, the city that you, that you live in now, what Youth Build program you uh, graduated from, and what you're doing today? So Jasmine, why don't we start with you? Ladies first. All right, thank you. Um, hello everybody, I am Jasmine Anderson. I am a um, Youth Bill McLean County graduate from 2008, um, located in Normal, Illinois, and that's where I'm still located. And I'm currently the Digital Divide Instructor at Youth Build. So um, I teach information technology and I'm also an entrepreneur, um, a momager, um, <laughs> yeah, all of those things. Great. Nice to see you. Jude, I'm going to turn to you next. Hey, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's good to be here. Um, well, I'm Jude. I graduated from the Youth Action Program at uh, out of East Harlem, New York. Uh, I'm currently, I'm sorry, it's, um, uh, I'm sorry about the phone call, but um, no worries. Uh, one second, madam. I'm so sorry about this, guys. You know what? Why don't I go to Steve right and we'll here. come back to you? Okay. I'm right here. I'm back. Okay, I'm back. Good. I'm so sorry. I'm so no sorry. Um, I'm currently uh, in a gap semester right now during um, COVID and other uh, events that's happened this year, but I'm a graduate of uh, BMCC in uh, liberal arts, and I'm waiting to hear back from NYU, but I've been accepted to Hunter College, and I'm a lifeguard and swim instructor at Asphalt Green and various other um, swim companies. Terrific. And what year did you graduate? I graduated Youth Action in January 2017. Great. And, and Jasmine, when did you graduate? 2008. 2008. Great. Steve, turn to you. Stephen, turn to you. Uh, my name is Stephen Figueroa. Um, I am from the uh, Youth Bill in Troy, New York. I graduated in 20, uh, 2013. Uh, and currently, I am the outreach coordinator uh, for the Boys and Girls Club of the Capital Area um, in the Capital Region in New York. And also, I'm a program mentor and one of the directors of uh, Team Hero, which uh, stands for Helping Everyone Recognize Opportunities is a youth uh, development program. Great. Well, welcome. I'm going to start with the first question. As you three know, Youth Build was founded on Youth Voice and really challenges young people to be leaders. Um, why is that important, um, particularly in these challenging times? Any takers? I can go. So um, I'm also a part of a group called uh, Equitable Ecosystems. And it's a group where we talk about how um, the importance of young people and their voices I feel like it's important because these programs and these businesses, these, um, yeah, all of those are for youth. So I feel like we should have a youth voice, the youth input for programs and, um, and things like that that's for them so that they can be successful. I feel like a young person knows what it takes for them to be successful. And us, well, adults, we just help pull it out of them. Like we pull the potential and all of that out of them. So I feel like that's why their voices are important. And like the program that I was in and that I'm still working at, um, we centered around youth and the youth voices and how they want the program ran. And I feel like we've been successful with this. So I feel like that's why it's important for, for youth to, you know, run everything. <laughs> well, not run everything, but, you know, have that input. That's okay. You can run everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jude or Steven? Yeah. Steven? Uh, yeah, I can go. So uh, for me, um, it's really important, and I think that was part of the foundation that you've built. Um, you've built brought out of me, and 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 like uh, Jasmine said, like tapping into the potential that I didn't know I had. And I think when we focus on tapping into the potential of these young people, they will um, they will become leaders. And and for me, I think they're the next generation uh, behind us. And if we start now tapping into potential, to their potential and investing in what they're really great at, they could become leaders and make a difference uh, and make it a better tomorrow in our society. Yeah. Jude, would you like to respond as well? Um, it's, it was, it's an eye-opening thing that they did at Youth Build. It's an amazing organization. I loved every single moment of it. And what they brought out of me is things I knew that I had. But then when I saw the other people around me um, get their task, 
get their OSHA 30s, get all these other certifications, I saw them rise from when uh, just like a few months ago, they weren't doing so well, they're not very confident, but the more things they succeeded in, the more confident they got. And I see some of them on social media doing great. And it's, I knew I could do it, but seeing these other people who didn't know they could do it, it was, it's, it's an amazing program and I will do anything for it. So yeah, it's reinforcing when you see others mm -hmm. in a struggle, right? Yeah. And also succeeding. So Jude, I'm going to ask you the next question or ask you to lead the, the answering of the next question. Um, we all know that you, you each have overcome a number of triumphs in your life already. Um, but with that struggle often come lessons. And I'm wondering if you might share some of the learning that you've had in making, in turning a struggle into a triumph. Turning a struggle into it. Um, I don't want to sound cliche at all, but it just comes down to like um, sitting with the struggle, it, whether that's um, an emotional struggle you're going through, something at work, something at school. You kind of got to like sit with it, breathe through it, and understand it, and then move forward. But you kind of just got to like feel the struggle first, and then move ahead that's i think the lesson i've learned when dealing with struggle is you kind of got like sit in the bad for a second to pull out and come out on top yeah that's good advice steven um i think i think for me is uh is being determined um determination and i think that's that's what one of the um one of the things that you've built showed me throughout throughout the time that I was there, um, that no matter what happens, um, there's gonna be struggles, there's gonna, there's, gonna be, uh, there's gonna be obstacles, but it's all about being resilient. And I think that was one of the foundations that you feel showed me and that, and, I, and for me is never giving up. Um, and that was one of the main, main things that you feel showed me as well, that we all come from different type of backgrounds. We all come from different type of neighborhoods um, different kind of struggles, and it didn't matter where you came from. Um, they they were still there to invest in you and make sure you you move forward and pass those hurdles, and make sure that you have all the tools you need to be successful. So I think that that determination and motivation that they gave to me um, it helped me overcome my adversity. Mm -hmm. It's a powerful. That's a powerful thing. The the power of having resources and network and support to help you achieve your dream. Mm-hmm. Jasmine. All right. So um one of my main struggles is um recognizing my potential and acting on it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like um even now as an instructor at Youthville, there's still some of the same teachers and people there from when I went through the program and just having them like letting me know my potential, like um telling me what I'm good at and be like, oh no, I'm not good at that, but they keep on reinforcing it and allowing me to use resources and be able to um to be a teacher. Like I never thought I'd be a teacher because I'm so shy. <laughs> so, so them being able to pull out that potential to be able to push me outside of my comfort zone and um, you know, just take taking it in and being accepting of my of my greatness, really, and having them be able to to allow me to do that. Having resources, yes. Yeah, these are these are great answers. But this year, 2020, man, like if someone tried to explain to me a year ago that I would be in my house 24-7, wearing masks and worried about sickness and death, mm -hmm. um, and and how our society is navigating, I just I there's just, I would have told them this was like a sci-fi movie, right? Like I could not imagine the experience that we're having now. Um, and what I've learned from this experience, and I'm sure that you share this, is that um, we all have had to adapt, right? We've had to develop new coping skills, right? We've had to find reserves of resiliency that we perhaps didn't even know we had. What are some of the ways in the midst of all of these challenges that you've found to stay positive and stay focused and keep that agenda that you all have described your arcs in terms of where you are now and where you want to be. Like, 
you know, how have you kept that going? I got a therapist. <laughs> Get a therapist. Get a therapist. That's it. That's all there is. Get a therapist. It should be required when you're born. You should immediately get a therapist. It is an essential thing that we all must have. We need to be able to check in with ourselves. I work out a lot. I have a lot of friends who say working out is their therapy. You can come out of a workout and get uh, get those endorphins, get, get the runner's high and feel good and get the stress off, but you, but the inside work didn't happen. So I think what is, I think the most important thing, a vital thing is getting a therapist. You know, Jude, I love that you, that you raised that because sometimes in our communities, there's a lot of stigma around the idea of, of wanting to talk, getting talk therapy. Can you just talk a little bit about like what, like, how did you get there and how would you encourage others to, to consider I needed uh, it finding for someone? Years. Mm -hmm. I needed it for years. And um, with my mom passing away this year, with COVID, with all these other things that's going on, I really needed a therapist. And having a significant other when things weren't going right, I needed a therapist to like really set myself up on a right on the right course because the way I would deal with things wasn't right. And it's just what we need. It doesn't there shouldn't be a stigma. You know, Absolutely. people immediately people immediately think when you talk about mental health issues, they're crazy. They see a straight jacket in the psych ward when it's not that. And not um, seeing the mind or the brain as vital as your as your lungs, as your heart, as your kidneys, is just as detrimental to your health because your brain is the quarterback of, of your entire body. You know, I can't do this without my brain. Man, so, that's awesome. That's awesome. So just take care of that. I don't. It doesn't matter how you get there just get there there are um ways you can get it for free there's ways you can just talk to someone on it. there's apps i understand people have to pay for it but i for a while before i even got a therapist i used um nyc help the helpline if anyone needs that can't afford it just talk to you can text to someone and they're they're on, on for 24 hours um there is hopefully if there's um, health insurance you can talk to your insurance company and find and find a fit, but it's vital that everyone get a therapist. Thank you, Jude. Appreciate your transparency around that. No doubt, no problem. Steven? Um, for me, uh, to be honest, um, and I was, I was, I, I always mention this to uh, one of my brothers, my brother Jerry, um, what, what allows me to cope is the work that I do, um, serving the community. And I think that was, I think that has been vital to me um, since I've been in the youth field because in youth field, we focus a lot on service and we service the community a lot, whether it was building houses, whether it was in a soup kitchen. So the lot of work that I do is, is outreach and, and I feel like I receive my healing and cope when I'm able to serve these families and bring food to them. And, and maybe it's a food clothing shelter or a domestic violence situation. So. I kind of receive, I receive healing in that process when I'm able to feel that I'm, I, I help a family overcome uh, some obstacles, whether it was food insecurities or, or any of that nature. But um, the youth bill definitely um, made an impact in my life when it became the, the, the service part of it, when we was able to service the community. And I do a lot of that work now and, and that's how I cope and I receive healing by serving others and making sure others is good in the community. Indeed, indeed. And you know, we can always find time to give a little slice of ourselves, right? We can always do that. Jasmine? All right, for me, um, to piggyback off of what both of them said. So um, I did, I got a therapist and um, I always wanted one, but I was always like, I was always skeptical about it. But then um, we encourage our youth to get therapists. 
So I'm like, I can't lead by just saying, oh, go get a therapist. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take that step and I'm gonna go get a therapist too. I have students watching me. So, so they can see that it's okay to take care of your mental health. So I did, I got a therapist and being able to, um, to help students navigate through the pandemic. It's also been uplifting for me to be able to help them do that. And then I have a daughter. So uh, being able to spend all of this time with her and, um, you know, get to watch her grow more that we're in a, we're together all the time now. So she's not going to school. I'm not going to work. We're just in the house together, learning each other and um, that. And I lean on my coworkers a lot. So um, we're a close knit group. So we all lean on each other and make things fun in my family and I'm spiritual so prayer um every morning with my family um that type of stuff that's how I've been navigating through the pandemic yeah well the the struggle is real but finding those those elements of positivity is so important because we're still think at halftime right (laughs) and I think you've given some great advice around how we can stay positive um we actually have a question from the panel so I'm going to integrate that or uh, from the chat I should say Um, so if, if any of you had a magic wand that gave you the power to change an unjust system or a current problem that you see in the community, what change would you like to see? Free healthcare for all and decriminalization of drugs. Yes. I would say, I would say police reform. Um, I would say... So in my community, like alone, I see a lot of young um, African-American males either dead or getting very harsh sentences. So I would like to see like a community where we um, uplift those youth and give them second chances and give them the opportunity to what um, John said earlier, be lifelong learners and leaders. So um, I would change that. Yeah. 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 Well, we've been dealing with the twin epidemic, right, in 2020 of COVID and racial injustice. And, um, you know, I think that both experiences have given the country an opportunity to see the work we need to do (laughs) in those dimensions. So I have one last question, and that is, um, you Um, all have planful, you've talked about the things that have sustained you, Um, you've given some great advice. I'm really interested in what you're planning to do for 2021. What is your goal for 2021? I have a lot. So, um, like I mentioned earlier, I'm a part of a group where we, um, young leaders and leaders from different areas of the United States, we work together to come up with solutions for us to help youth be more, feel more belonging in the communities and jobs and elsewhere. So I want to piggyback off of that and, um, I want to help build something in the community where we can help youth coming out of prison to help them stay out of prison. So coming up with housing for them, different um, work experiences, jobs for them and and that nature. And I want to do real estate investing. It's a lot (laughs) to do real estate investing. Um, I'm a momager, so help my daughter um, get to more fashion shows and acting stuff. And yeah, just be an anchor in the community and then my daughter will even um so in in our community there's been a lot of uh a lot of violence and i'm pretty sure um in other communities um across the u.s um and i'm currently working with uh, my team over here and building more opportunities uh, for young people um creating a safe space and um working on building a community center where they can come and and get educated and see and be in a safe environment um, as well as, um, you know, I've been doing service for for many years um, through Youth Build, through the community, and I have decided to take it to the next step and and, and wanted to run for office. Um, And my plan is to uh, diversify, um, diversify the office and make sure that uh, people of color, black and brown, and our black and brown communities, that their voices are being heard and they're represented. Um, And to bring someone relatable to their communities. Um, And first and foremost, I would like to thank Dave. He was just uh, speaking a little while ago. Um, He's working with me closely um, with with that project. So those are my next step. And also um, building leaders. 
I don't, I don't want to take no power with me. Um, I want to um, create that power and invest it in our young people so they can become leaders and uh, become voters and become elected officials as well and, and be able to make a difference in, in their community. So that's my plans uh, for 2021. Love it. Love it. Jude? Man, how am I going to follow that? <laughs> Man, I said office. Oh, God. Um, well, I plan on going to school, getting, getting my, starting my uh, bachelor's, uh, continuing uh, instructing swimming. I'm on my way to becoming a head guard and um, continuing to grow my podcast, Harlem, Harlem's very own podcast with my partner, Justin Winley. And um, you can check it out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and yeah, just hopefully grow grow that show and can, can continue to do my thing and fig- and become a functioning member of society. Yeah, I think that's a pretty big and bodacious uh, plan for twenty twenty one. Tell us more about the uh, podcast. Oh, because <laughs> this oh, is your I, commercial. I, <laughs> yes, it is my commercial. My bad. And also, I'm a a candidate for the board of directors of youth build miss um, stoneman just messaged me about it <laughs> oh my gosh i feel so terrible it's just been life has just been so crazy lately but um so the podcast is basically me and my partner justin we've been friends for five years through martial arts that's how we became friends and we talk about general pop culture things that go on in the news and then we speak about martial arts sports entertainment politics we uh, our last episode we spoke about movember the um the men's movement where they grow a mustache to raise awareness for um men's health issues prostate cancer suicide rates things of that nature and you know it's it's something that i really enjoy doing we've been do- doing it for about a year now we have over a thousand downloads you know little wins little wins and it's something I love. It's Harlem's very own podcast. One more time. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I have one last question. And that is knowing what you know now, having had the experience of being in Youth Build, and um, all of you have talked about the ways in which you've stayed connected with Youth Build, um, what would you tell your um, first day recruit self uh what lesson do you think it would be that that you would share based on the the breadth and depth of the experiences you've had so far because you all are success paradigms let's let's just be clear you all are doing amazing things in your lives and you still have a long arc to go but you've also learned a lot what what would you what would you tell your your newbie self in youth build? Um, I would say step outside of your comfort zone. I don't stay boxed in. Um, Take advantage of the resources that youth build has and provides. Um, Take on opportunities if you don't feel comfortable, even if you don't feel comfortable to help yourself grow and just enjoy the process. I think think for me, so a lot of, and, and I, I, I worked for Youth Bill for some time as well um, after I transitioned to the Boys and Girls Club. And when they come in the door and the type of, you know, uh, background and communities they live in, um, not a lot of people believe in them. And one thing I tell them, like, this is a huge step, believe in yourself. So believing in yourself and believing in the process is the one most important thing that you can really uh, tell these individuals that's coming in because no one believes in them. And it's probably 90% of the kids that I I encounter is like, well, I'm ready to give up. Well, I don't believe in myself. Mm -hmm. Believing in in the self and believing in the process and and being able to uh, be led uh, by the youthful staff and I, but for me the most important thing is believing in themselves yeah. that they can do it yeah the question was 
I, what I would tell my younger self or yes. yes. What would you tell your younger self or what would you tell a new recruit? What, what would I tell my younger self? I don't know, because I think I, when I was going into youth build, I heard I got paid. I heard there were construction certifications. I heard all that. I was like, what do I got to do? What do I got to do? Mm-hmm. So I don't know what I would say to my younger self because I just heard those things and I was, and I was working somewhere where I knew I didn't want to spend the rest of my life working that way. I had a, I, it was just immediate horse on the carrot, go ahead. But what I would say to a new recruit, just believe in yourself and we got you. Just do the work. It's going to be hard, but we are available and we are here for you. Mm-hmm. And that's what they've been. I, they spent, the teachers like uh, Robert Ro- Rosenwald at my program spent hours with us going over English, science, um, my teacher, my math teacher Marlene spent hours going over math. I remember I would like call her, sp- go tutor with her someplace else. These people are there for you. They're working in youth build because they want to help you use, don't take advantage of us like in the worst word, but like take advantage of us in the best yes. way. Yes. We are here to help you. That is what we are here to do. Don't think we're, we are, you know, no no offense to high school teachers, but high school teachers who are stuck Mm -hmm. in their positions, who aren't funded properly, who aren't um, paid well, who aren't um, appreciated within their own circle and community of the Board of Education in the United States. Mm -hmm. Youth Build shows appreciation to its entire staff and it makes it a healthy place where they want to work and they want to help uh, the people coming in. So we are here to help you and don't forget that. Well, that is an amazing way to conclude the conversation. Um, Jude, Jasmine, and Stephen, I really want to thank you for the generosity of your wisdom. I think you dropped a lot of knowledge, gave some great tips that are as relevant for newbies coming into youth build as they are for the alumni community. And I would be remiss if I didn't channel a little bit of my friend and mentor and founder of youth build, Dorothy Stoneman, to say that you are the living embodiment of the vision of youth build. So I thank you from the bottom mm-hmm. of my heart. Anytime. for what you for what you're doing and what you're going to do and Stephen as soon as you get your political campaign together I want you to find my email or we need to exchange it I'm making a contribution to your campaign thank you um, also I want I, uh, you mentioned Dorothy um, Dorothy has been vital into my life I think if it wasn't for her vision um, I don't think any of us uh, you know would be here and John, but uh, Dorothy has been amazing. Um, and, you know, it's funny because being a founder and CEO, you would think that, you know, sometimes it takes some connection to get to the yeah. big boss lady. And just that relationship that she built with all of us is like enormous. So I, I truly thank uh, uh, Dorothy and, 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 and John for the commitment yes. and for keeping the vision of you, Bill. Appreciate Indeed. it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you John. Thank you so much, Michelle. Wow, thank all of you. I mean, the themes are just spinning in my head, just so inspiring. Uh, So thank you to each of you for sharing in such a powerful way, authentic way, who you are and and what is possible for you and what you wanna make possible for others. You you just make us all so proud. And before we close, uh, I just wanna say, Thank you to everyone for believing in our young people, for being part of this event and supporting youth build programs. And as 2020 comes to a close, and if you're able, please consider supporting Youth Build USA and youth build programs. Join us on social media, media, check out our new website, and we so hope to see you again very soon in person in Roxbury or one of the local youth build programs in the new year. Thank you all for being here. Have a good night. Happy holidays. Happy new year. Stay safe.